Court of Appeals in New Orleans. This comes a year after a Texas judge declared DACA illegal. The judges listened to the arguments, immigration attorneys, Hello, I'm Leonard Malton. You know, in the old days of those Saturday matinee cliffhanger serials, the audience had to wait an entire week to find out what happened to its hero. George Lucas went well beyond that. He kept us all waiting years between Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and then finally, The Return of the Jedi. Thanks for being here. By the time you got to Episode 3, did... Anything from public feedback, from your own second thoughts, change your vision of what the third installment should be? Or is it the way you thought it would turn out? No, it's pretty much the way it was always thought to come out. I mean, the, I had to make certain changes to things because in the original screenplay, the, the Ewoks were Wookiees. And, and Chewbacca really wasn't the co-pilot. So... Um, and so when I did the first film, I loved the Wookiee so much. I said, well, I gotta get a Wookiee. You know, those get done. So I took the Wookiee out of the battles and made him the co-pilot. Uh, because originally they were sort of a primitive race of people who couldn't fly or couldn't do anything. And uh, cause that was the point. And uh, so I had to sort of, I had to figure out how I was gonna do Wookiees and I basically cut them in half and called them Ewoks. But, but, it was, it was, um, you know, a lot of that stuff is all, all there, but in the, in the original, it was a ground battle and an air battle all together. How did you ever think of Jabba the Hutt? Well, Jabba, it's one of those things I needed a, a gangster. I mean, I had, he was in the first film and, uh, in the, uh, you know, in the special edition, we're, we're putting back a lot of material with Jabba the Hutt in the first film, in the, in the very first one that we did. And, um, he, so he was in that, you know, he's this big gangster. Uh, and uh, it wasn't until a little later that we actually, because we couldn't do that sequence, because we didn't have the time. But uh, when we got to the third one, job up here, then we did this whole thing of designing that one as a big kind of repulsive character. And, uh, and uh, we had a lot of designers coming up with various versions of Jabba the Hutt. Was it a conscious decision to move a good chunk of the action from part three into an earthly outdoor terrain? Uh, it's so different from anything you see in the first two films. Well, it was. I'm, I'm very conscious of the environments, and I try to have at least three environments in a movie, and I try to have them as different as possible, and then from movie to movie, I try to have the environments as different as possible. Um, you know, in the first movie, we were on a sand thing. It was all kind of a brown color. And so then on the second one, I put the snow, and it was all kind of white. Uh, and then I did the green, you know, swampy kind of thing. Uh, and the third one, you know, I mean, you're sort of, I mean, what can you do in terms of environments? You have to shoot it somewhere on the surface. Unfortunately, we can't go somewhere else. So, you know, a forest was really about the only thing I had left. And originally, even with the Wookiees, they, they, the Wookiees lived in a forest environment. They lived in the same kind of tree houses, and they did that. You know, it was, they were sort of birth people. There's a whole motif of, like, Luke's planet. Every, everybody is brown. There's lots of browns and earth tones. Everything has earth tones, and light tan, and light brown, uh, flesh color. You know, it's all very uh, warm, warm tones. And then when you go to the Death Star, it's all black and white. Everything is black and white all the time. You know, it's all very harsh and contrasting, black and white. And I use that a lot. So in the larger, it was the same way. You know, was, you know where the Wookiees lived, it was all sort of green and brown. Um, you know, I added that in, it sort of was a motif that went from you know, sort of a tan brown to a green brown. And uh, so that, that sort of still exists in the actual film. And so there's a whole color and environment motif that goes through, and the good guys are all the earth colors, and the bad guys are all colorless. <laughs> Your many, many fans, and there are many avid fans, as you know, of the Star Wars trilogy, are wondering about the next three films. And why is it taking so long? Why does it take so long? And how long will it take? Well, um, I am I'm working on the, the next three films, and, and it's... it's uh, 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 I am in the process of writing the three screenplays now, and it takes a while to write, uh, write the screenplays. It, uh, to write the first Star Wars took about two years, so writing three scripts at once, it won't take that long, but um, uh, it takes a long time to prep them, and uh, hopefully we'll have one finished uh, for 98. If not, it'll be 99, but um, the, um, we're doing all three at once. I'm writing all three at once. And the first three are based on the backstory that relates to 
where everybody came from, how they got there, uh, what their relationships are. Has this backstory been in your head all along from the inception? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I had to do the backstory in order to write the first three. Uh, I had to know where Darth Vader came from. I had to know what his relationship to Luke was. I had to know how Ben Kenobi figured in all of this. Um, you know, I had to realize that there were, you know, I had to understand that there were twins, and the whole arc of the story uh, in the in the three that are out there now is really the redemption of Anakin Skywalker. And so the first three are really, that are right now, are really about Anakin Skywalker. So now you have a redemption of somebody you don't really even know, he's just always in a black suit. But you don't know how he fell from grace and the, the trauma that went through to get him to there, and then his son brings him back. But it's, um, you know, the real story hasn't even been told yet. What would it take to persuade you to go back onto a soundstage and direct a film yourself? Well, I'd like to direct again. I mean, I'm very interested um, and still in directing. And um, there is a possibility I may direct one of the next Star Wars. If I do direct again, it'll be the first one so that I can set the stage and, the, and you know, how everything works uh, for the other directors to follow. But as we approach the millennium, we can look forward to the, the prequel trilogy. Definitely. Delivered a letter from President Biden. A response to her 